O Radiant Stream by Jean Blewett Read for LibriVox.org By Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. River St. Lawrence, tranquil and fair, Soft in the sunlight, blue as the sky, Crowned with a beauty tender and rare, And kissed by the breeze that goes hurrying by, Warm dost thou look, and fair as a dream, Speeding so merrily out to the sea, So strong and so gentle, O radiant stream, The smile of the summer is resting on thee. River St. Lawrence, tranquil and fair, Winding thy way for a thousand long miles, Past meadow and homestead, past rocks grim and bare, with a song for the shore, a kiss for the isles, Lovingly cradled on thy broad breast, Isles without number and fair as can be, O sweet shining river, bonniest, best, The smile of the summer is resting on thee, River St. Lawrence, tranquil and fair, Light bearing the great ships along, Boats with their white sails spread out in the air, The broad rafts of timber so clumsy and strong, The slender canoe as swift as a bird. The Indian builds with bark from a tree, Though bearest them all unwearied unstirred, The smile of the summer is resting on thee. River St. Lawrence, tranquil and fair, Pure are thy waters that bask in the light, Thy ripples of laughter ring sweet on the air, The rocks bend to listen by day and by night, The turbulent streams rushing down from the hills To mingle and race with thee out to sea, Steal not from thy azure, O beauty that thrills, The smile of the summer is resting on thee. River St. Lawrence, tranquil and fair, Onward thou speedest, so deep and so wide, The sunbeams that lurk on thy bosom, see there, A tremendous tumult of love and of pride, Of love and of pride for the place of thy birth, Thy faraway mother, the fresh-water sea, From whence thou did spring forth to gladden God's earth, The smile of the summer is resting on thee. River St. Lawrence, tranquil and fair, Soft in the sunlight, blue as the sky, Crowned with beauty tender and rare, And kissed by each breeze that goes hurrying by, Warm dost thou look, and fair as a dream, Speeding so merrily out to the sea, So mighty, so gentle, O radiant stream, The smile of the summer is resting on thee. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sweet Briar Maid by Jean Blewett Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. I called her sweet briar when we first walked, deep down in the winding lane. The wild birds sang, and we laughed, and we talked, deep down in the winding lane. We met in the sunshine of one spring day, youthful and happy and free. Into her keeping my heart flew straight away. Pretty and piquant was she. Her hazel eyes were so gentle and meek, But scornful her mouth and chin. Her brow was severe, but each rosy cheek Had a roguish dimple in. And I cried, I love you, my sweet briar maid. And then, O oh, moment of bliss, My lips to her cherry-red lips I lay, And tasted my first love kiss. "'Twas ever and ever so long ago, but I remember it yet. Ah, the springtime of life 
its bloom and its glow the heart can never forget my sweet briar maid i would give to-day the wealth the fame and the gold that the years have brought if they'd roll away and leave us the thrill of old if only straight backward old time would move ah wishing is all in vain and leave us with youth and joy and love deep down in that winding lane end of poem this recording is in the public domain my canada by jean blewett read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c my canada i would that i thy child might frame a song half worthy of thy name proudly i say this is our country strong and broad and grand this is our canada our native land my canada tis meet that all the world should know how far thy sweeping rivers flow how fair to-day thy bonny lakes upon thy bosom lie their faces laughing upward to the sky my canada we look alway with love and pride upon thy forests deep and wide and gladly say these giant fellows mighty grown with age are part and parcel of our heritage my canada so rich in glow and bracing air with meadows stretching everywhere with gardens gay with smiling orchards sending forth to greet full breaths of perfume from their burdens sweet my canada though art not old though art not skilled but through the ages youth hath thrilled tis dawn with thee though has a glorious promise and thy powers are measured only by the golden hours my canada what thou art now we know full well what thou wilt grow to be ah who can tell we see to-day thy lithe form running swiftly in the race for all the things which older lands do grace my canada with loyal sons to take thy part to hold thee shrined within the heart proudly we say this is our country strong and broad and grand god guard thee canada our native land end of poem this recording is in the public domain perfect peace by jean blewett read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c because he trusteth in thee isaiah in an hour when all was anguish when loss and death were near i sought the christ and cried out loud for aid though the heavy mist of sorrow his voice came sweet and clear take the promise let thy mind on me be stayed for ye shall have perfect peace and the grieving shall depart and the striving and the bitterness shall cease then laid the wounded hand of him upon my breaking heart lo twas mine the priceless gift of perfect peace come let us weigh the tenderness christ hath for you and me by the promises he ready stands to prove let us try to comprehend it the gift so full and free oh the height and depth and length and breadth of love he is so patient with us as he guides our stubborn feet so patient though we wander far astray lean on the everlasting strength he saith in accents sweet as we falter and we stumble by the way for ye shall have perfect peace and the grieving shall depart 
and the striving and the bitterness shall cease then laid the wounded hand of him upon my breaking heart lo twas mine the priceless gift of perfect peace blessed christ if we could bring thee the years so swiftly gone o oh, the wasted hours the swiftly coming night the finding in the twilight what we might have found at dawn thee the source of strength and joy and all delight i can thank thee now for taking what i held dear away for my mind on thee and thee alone is stayed thou wilt give back my treasures in the coming golden day i will trust thee and i will not be afraid for i shall have perfect peace and the grieving shall depart and the striving and the bitterness shall cease then laid the wounded hand of him upon my breaking heart lo twas mine the priceless gift of perfect peace end of poem this recording is in the public domain The King's Gift by Jean Blewett Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. The angels open the windows wide In the world so far above us Lo, all about us, on every side Falls the newborn year, unstained, untried O oh, angel hearts that love us Ye take our yesterdays dim and old, touched with sorrow and sinning, and ye give to us with a grace untold, the year's soft dew and the dawn of gold, ye give us the fresh beginning, unstained the new year falls at our feet, from the world so far above us, and what it will bring of joy complete, or take of treasures tender and sweet, Ye know, O oh hearts that love us. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. I Love Her Well by Jean Blewett, sung for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in August 2017. I love her well, day after day, I tell the old words over, they ring no change from grave to gay, it is enough, I love her, I love her well, nay, never ask the reason why I do so, ask flowers that in the sunshine bask, the reason why they grew so they'll tell you heaven saw the need and so on earth's brown bosom the angel scattered out the seed the sunbeams kissed to blossom i love her well day after day i tell the old words over they ring no change from grave to gay it is enough i love her End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Good Night by Jean Blewett. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. I am not brave enough to sing the requiem of a hope just dead. That word goodbye will surely bring the shadow upon swifter wing come let us say good night instead see where upon the water's crest the sky comes down a samite pall to our poor vision dim at best that curtain of rare amethyst marks the sure ending of it all ah heart the lesson you forget this wind which goes with hurrying sweep sees farther on and farther yet the white ships go the waters fret the tender stars their virgils keep so not good-bye good night that's all the loneliness the loss is mine to-morrow when the glad winds call 
the folds of mist will backward fall and leave me with my hand in thine end of poem this recording is in the public domain her gold by jean blewett read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c i covet her gold sir no farther i got his wrath down upon me so swiftly descended a gay fortune hunter a spendthrift a sot were names i was called before he had ended you covet her gold ah no man with a heart would do such a thing not even a pauper with you on life's journey my child shall not start if counsel of mine and warning can stop her i covet her gold and believe me i said the honest fact will in no way surprise her i covet her gold sir the gold on her head once it is mine you may call me a miser end of poem this recording is in the public domain goodbye to work by jean blewett read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c goodbye to work i say and straight the pain of having such to say puts coward touches on my face and leaves me strangely old and gray why not we deem it not amiss beside the coffin and the pall to let our loss fill all our thought to let our tears like raindrops fall and when i stand and voice to-day the thought of my reluctant heart unclasp your bands and go your way o oh, work tis time for us to part i say good-bye to more than friend a comrade staunch and tried and true who linked his faith with that of mine and placed with me the dull year through to work the one enduring thing born of my vast desire for good and nourished by each grand resolve that swept my being like a flood to work the gracious thing and strong that found the welcome of a bride when life was in its green glad spring the coming years outstretching wide when not as laggard to his task but as a lover warm and true i held it close in my embrace and felt its greatness thrill me through o oh, work if time had passed us by and left us youth and youth's desires what heights nay never soul of man mounts up so high as it aspires the years harsh things that steal the dew from all that's fair disdain to show such mercy towards our purpose strong to learn untouched its tender glow not always kind not often fair since hearts so rarely constant prove what wonder that my fever passed that dulled grew the sharp edge of love when eyes entreating met my own between would come your changeless face till thwarted i would feel to cry o oh, work release me for a space but what man putting the last kiss on lips once love recalls to mind one slight defect the haughty look the thoughtless word the act unkind but lets the memory of each grace each sweetness each light tender trick throng to his heart feel at his strings until the tears fall hot and thick so work i find since you and i may walk together never more i hold you dear enough to wish that we might live the dead years o'er good-bye my work and straight the pain of having such a thing to say prince coward touches on my face and leaves me strangely 
old and gray end of poem this recording is in the public domain Somebody by Jean Blewett, sung for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in August 2017. She's plain of face, she hath little grace, they say when they speak of me. Tis little I care, I am more than fair in the eyes of somebody she is cold they say as a winter's day it mattereth not to me for the glow and heat of my true heart's beat is known unto somebody she holdeth in hand neither gold or land other dull eyes cannot see how rich and great is my broader state in the heart of somebody end of poem this recording is in the public domain my little maid by jean blewett Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. My little maid, my little maid, you grow too old, I'm afraid. Your birthday is it, tell me, dear, how long ago did you come here? What, five today, how tall you grow? I wish time would not hurry so, I wish he'd go on his way nor call on us for many a day stay in the baby world so new its flowers are drowning in the dew its paths are soft to tender feet stay in the baby world my sweet my little maid my little maid you grow too old i'm afraid the questions trembling on your tongue tell me you are no longer young how many hours are in the year how high up is the heaven clear and do the ships so big and grand go sailing to some other land stay in the baby world so new its flowers are drowning in the dew its paths are soft to tender feet stay in the baby world my sweet my little maid my little maid you grow too old i am afraid your schoolhouse holds your steady gaze your mind is in a wondrous maze so much to learn so much to see you're just as busy as can be my nursery rhymes have all been told red riding hood will soon be old stay in the baby world so new its flowers are drowning in the dew its paths are soft to tender feet stay in the baby world my sweet my little maid my little maid you grow too old i am afraid your tender face it seems to me is filled full of expectancy a spirit questioning and wise looks out at me from your dark eyes till i am fain to hold you fast and hide you while old time goes past stay in the baby world so new its flowers are drowning in the dew its paths are soft to tender feet stay in the baby world my sweet my little maid my little maid you grow too old i am afraid five years it seems a little while since you came here with slow sweet smile on your wee mouth your pretty chin and each cheek with a dimple in your soft hands clutching at the air your birthright all our love and care stay in the baby world so new its flowers are drowning in the dew its paths are soft to tender feet stay in the baby world my sweet end of poem 
This recording is in the public domain. Heather White by Jean Blewett Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Sprig, O oh Heather, you were born, Where the mountains greet the morn, Just within the shadow dim Of the grey rocks, harsh and grim, Just beside the torrent's brim, You were born. I, a naturalist, can trace In thy sweet, sky-lifted face Signs and tokens of the place Clear as morn. Breath that comes from Mong the firs, when the wet faced sea wind stirs in its flight, night of gloom and day of gold, hill and vale, white flocks in fold, ah, to night, dim my eyes grow as they see all thy dear heart shows to me, blossom from across the sea, heather white. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Granny's Message to Jack by Jean Blewett Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. You're sending Jack a letter, dear. Today he's twenty-one, and plainly I can read your pride and joy in the dear son he wants a message ah if i could take his hand in mine instead of putting all my love in one poor little line but write out clear and let it read to jack away from home old granny says get ready for the kingdom come your smiling daughter as you write but jack won't smile that way his mind will just go flying back to thoughts of yesterday, before he got so big and strong, and oh, so very nice, when he was Granny's white-haired boy, just dreaming of the skies. So write out clear and let it read, to Jack away from home, old Granny says get ready for the kingdom come. Somehow the letters that we get don't seem to come from him and often when i've read them through my poor old eyes are dim he talks too much of worldly things my jack was never proud of wealth and fame and power to win and going with the crowd so write out clear and let it read to jack away from home old granny says get ready for the kingdom come you think his birthday calls for more that one poor little line nay there are those who love him less to make him wishes fine my words go from a faithful heart they're true and they are warm there's loving wisdom in them too to keep my boy from home so write out clear and let it read to jack away from home O oh, Granny says get ready for the kingdom come. I'd like to see him as he reads, his blue eyes brimming o'er, and good thoughts rising white and strong, to be forgot no more. Heaven will be nearer to his heart than it has been for years, for he will read in these few words my love, my hope, my prayers. So write it clear and let it read to Jack away from home. Old Granny says get ready for the kingdom come. Old Granny says get ready for the kingdom come. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The ever and ever so long ago by Jean Blewett, read for LibriVox.org, by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. O oh, life has its seasons, joyous and drear, its summer bloom and its frost and snow, but the fairest of all, I tell you, dear, 
was the sweet old spring of the long ago the ever and ever so long ago when we walked together among the flowers when the world with beauty was all aglow oh the rain and dew oh the shine and showers of the sweet old spring of the long ago the ever and ever so long ago a hunger for all of the past delight is stirred by the winds that softly blow oh spare but a thought dear from heaven to-night for the sweet old spring of the long ago the ever and ever so long ago end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Height by Jean Blewett, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. The climbing step by step up pathways steep had wearied me upon that summer day, till by and by a strong hand seemed to sweep all save the joyousness of life away. The heavens stretched their azure folds above i stood my feet upon the dizzy height i had not thought to reach save in my dreams the whirring of an eagle's wings in flight towards rarer winds and still more dazzling gleams of the red sun with every sound abroad full sweet the silence of the solemn place where nature radiant grew so close to god you saw his very kiss upon her face and heard the mystic murmur of his love end of poem this recording is in the public domain her portrait by jean blewett read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver B. C. A little child, she stood that far off day, when love, the master painter, took the brush, and on the wall of memory dull and gray, traced tender eyes, wide brow, and changing blush, the gladness and the youth, the bending head, all covered over with its curls of gold, the dimpled arms, the two hands filled with bread to feed the little sparrows brown and bold that flutter to her feet it hangs there still just as twas painted on that far-off day nor faded is the blush upon the cheek the sweet lips holding their smiling and can thrill and still the eyes so tender and so meek light up the walls of memory dull and gray end of poem this recording is in the public domain god loveth us by jean blewett read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c god loveth us in pain or bliss o heart be true and strong god loveth us and knowing this we know life's sweetest song god loveth us o eyes that find life's lesson hard to read by tears of loss made dim and blind learn his great love instead god loveth us o hands that grasp at human tenderness and then in emptiness unclasp he waits to fill and bless god loveth us o weary feet that find life's pathway long his love provides a rest so sweet the hope of it makes strong god loveth us o hearts that ache with striving all in vain his tender hand is reached to take the bitterness and pain god loveth us O fallen one, creep upward to the light. God's radiant stars shine on and on 
until the dawn grows bright god loveth us in pain or bliss o heart be true and strong god loveth us and knowing this we know life's sweetest song end of poem this recording is in the public domain an etching by jean blewett read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c a harvester throws up the sheaves and hums a merry old refrain some thistles show their prickly leaves among the swaths of yellow grain the briar brushes soft and green quite hide the zigzag fence away and all the space that lies between is carpeted with new mown hay the heat of noonday presses all to rest and silence full and deep and still the cheery robins call to show that they are not asleep End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Shadows by Jean Blewett. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. O oh, sweet white rose, I pray you tell why in that fragrant heart of thine where golden sunbeams seldom fell all grace and gladness seems to dwell and summer fragrance hold its shrine sweet am i west wind sweet and white then leave me in the shadow pray here soft dew bathe me all the night and no harsh sunbeam come at light to kiss the great white tears away End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Merry Christmas Unto Ye by Jean Blewett. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. A Merry Christmas Unto Ye. The wish is old, the sweet refrain of that song caroled long ago when love crept down o'er hill and plain singing full-toned to hearts in pain peace and good will let white flowers grow a merry christmas unto ye end of poem this recording is in the public domain Marguerite by Jean Blewett. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. All light and love and golden grace, one full glad day, one summer day, goes ever with me on my way, and to no other yields a place. Do you remember Marguerite? Ah, faithful one, I need not ask since to forget is such a task my strength fails toiling at it sweet we climb the path among the hills and laugh to see the wild birds go all startled flying to and fro afraid of great and unknown ills the wind laughed with us and grew warm with breath of leaf and stalk and flower no space of that delicious hour but held a fresh and subtle charm till by and by we stood and knew ourselves upon the height alone for us the blue sky smiled and shone the great world only held us two so fair so cold it could not be thou wert so proud my marguerite thou wert so proud and oh so sweet i scarce could look at all on thee till in me grew a madness born of the wind blowing from the south i bent and kissed thee on the mouth the ripe red mouth the bow of scorn no scorn was on it then my sweet 
but tenderness beyond compare thy white soul laid its secret bare thy love was mine mine marguerite i whispered foolish things and fond o oh, bliss for which i vainly yearned not not for me the truth i learned thine hand had signed stern duty's bond it was the end we did not say the lovers lingering good-bye only the day's glad soul did die and earth and heaven alike were gray did i forget is mine a heart one apt to yield up all its store i love thee ever more and more through all the years we dwelt apart one walked with me a little space to her i gave affection mild as to a pretty winning child who sought to cheer me with her grace with pretty tasks she filled each day walked in my home with gentle pride called me a dreamer off would chide my thoughts for soaring far away her robe swept softly to her feet her hair fell down a golden fleece yet when mine arm embraced bernice my soul embraced thee marguerite we cannot change we cannot pass to other things until we die who knows the old love may not lie within the grave beneath the grass perhaps twas wrong but this i know my longing eye could never still for love was stronger than my will and memory would not let thee go i know where one long silky braid fell down upon thy snowy neck and how the blushes came to deck and when the cunning dimples laid each of thy little tricks of speech hath kept its echo all the while thy laughter growing from a smile which sadness oft would chase and reach and now we stand alone again with naught to keep us far apart come to thy home within my heart and there forget all loss and pain come with that glow upon thy face we will go back a dozen years back past the graves back through the tears to that cold day of youth and grace and there take up the golden store of life and love so weighty grown i hold thy heart against mine own and thus will hold for evermore end of poem this recording is in the public domain the hoar frost on the wood by jean blewett read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c look through the glistening stubble fields to where last night in sullen and complaining mood over the fate that left them grim and bare the trees in yonder dear old forest stood the spring they moaned ah it will be a while er she can reach us with her magic wand who was it heard to-day miles upon mile there stretches out a white enchanted land each tall tree hath a weight of gems that shine mark how the sun can draw its beauties out on every soft white thing it kisses fall till in the air we see a dazzling line a sparkling gems it is a glorious rout of nature's children holding carnival end of poem this recording is in the public domain Two Creeds by Jean Blewett, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. The priest was earnest and sincere. He deemed that this stout cavalier, this stranger unto Christ's dear grace, who rested with him for a space, should hear the truth, what saith the creed, to every man that stands in need 
through weary miles of pilgrimage has tried his strength yet would he wage stout war of argument to-night with heathen ignorance of right with faltering tongue he then began to picture to this fellow man in error born on error nursed by pride and passion doubly cursed the glories of a city fair to which men climb on narrow stair of self-denial prayer and fast and zeal unflagging to the last its gates that flash the sunlight back what touch of splendor do they lack i see them lift themselves upright of pearl unblemished pure and white its streets gleam yellow in the sun through fields of green its waters run and o'er it all no shadow flies the sun sets not in paradise from every throat swells forth a song not one is mute of that vast throng who through the weeping and the night have found their way to heaven's delight no bitterness no cry of pain no grieving over mortal strain no shrinking will no coward fear no breaking heart no scalding tear in the fair city built above for this is heaven and heaven is love the other bowing courteously thanks for this kindness done to me i doff my boldness and my pride and sat here meekly by your side while you for a brief moment's space painted the beauty of that place where white souls live now list to me and bear your head as reverently while i set forth before your eyes the glories of my paradise a garden hidden quite away where stranger footsteps never stray the yellow sun shines all day long the wild bird sings his choicest song there at the gate my angel stands to welcome me with outstretched hands a lotus bud gleams in her hair her round soft arms all white and bare between her lips warm kisses hide love in her eyes that open wide a perfume comes up from the beds of lilies hanging their white heads the pearls of dew begin to fall a night bird too its mate doth call the changing shadows softly move but never touch the face i love you know o priest so learned and wise the sun sets not in paradise you tell of rest that waits the few that strive with earnest zeal and true to gain it as the years go past by toil and care and patient fast o priest my heaven gives richer dole it takes the laggard worthless soul and fills it up with rapture sweet and makes it know itself complete rest never penance one such rest as comes to me when her white breast is made a pillow for my cheek when her dark eyes look down and speak o love the world and all its care lies quiet outside this garden fair you know o priest so learned and wise the sun sets not in paradise you look for heaven after death i draw it in with every breath i am content be you the same if i mistake be mine the blame but in one fair sweet odored grove life's heaven if heaven means peace and love end of poem this recording is in the public domain His Ex Platonic Friend by Jean Blewett, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. I've lost a thing of value great, and woe is me, I'll now find it. The very choicest thing of all, or sure, you know, I wouldn't mind it. 
some call it friendship i don't know but take their word as is my duty but if the definition's true then friendship is a thing of beauty for mine took on so fair a form it charmed away all care and sadness it flashed out beams so strong and warm away went everything but gladness it looked from tender eyes of brown and spake my greatest fault forgiven in wondrous sweetness there it shone in truest eyes outside of heaven i felt it in the hand i clasped so small and yet so strong to guide me through waters deep or breakers past or aught that threatened to betide me with ripe red lips it spake to me o voice that always soothes and blesses while well, i philistine felt to pray that i might silence it with kisses i've lost all this by my mistake i walked you see not circumspectly i pressed a claim for love's sweet sake and friendship took to flight directly and i am left to think with pain how folly caused my loss and sorrow had i my friendship back again i do the very same to-morrow End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Grave by Jean Blewett. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Oh, the grave is a quiet place, my dear, so still and so quiet by night and by day reached by no sound either joyous or drear but keeping its silence alway alway oh the grave is a restful place my dear unvexed by the whitest loss or gain all the undone work of the speeding year may beat at its portals in vain in vain oh the grave is a tender place my dear the love immortal the faith the trust the grace and the beauty lie buried there so pure and so white in a robe of dust oh the grave is a home-like place my dear where we all do gather when day is done where the earth mother folds us close and near and the latch-string waits for the laggard one End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Settled by Arbitration by Jean Blewett. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. The three sat at meat in a country inn, and Patrick's face wore an elegant grin. For the Scotchman lean and the Englishman stout were having a nice little quarrel out. Now it all began when five times had gone, the glass and bottle to every one. The Englishman had a stubborn jaw, and could quote whole pages of English law, while the Scotchman was as stern and as grey as the rocks of his country far away. The bottle it made him but look more stern, but the other one took a boasting turn. He talked of their big brave ships on the sea, of their soldiers as brave as brave could be, of the English beef that no land could beat, of their puddings and pastries good to eat, and the Scotchman listened to every word, and seemed agreeing with all that he heard, till the square-jawed fellow by and by claimed his country the wittiest ever named the english wit sir it shines like the sun a the sun in a fog the other one then the arguments flew so thick and fast they'd have come to blows ere the thing was past had not patrick good-hearted blithe and gay chanced to travel with them that summer day now sure said he 
you know tis the fashion to settle disputes by arbitration faith a rail could shindy's the thing for me but the rail o could shindy has ceased to be let be the powers and raisin a bit wits now and ud erin will settle it then these two disputants they both agreed to take his finding in word and deed the english wit sir let's take off our hats can't be seen by folks that are blind as bats till nothing of your common everyday stuff nor like that of ireland vulgar and bluff sure tis something i would only compare to what is well known as precious and rare say to the famous philosopher stone or elixir of life to old sages known no irishman from the hill or the bog would say it was like the sun in a fog that statement sirs on the face is untrue for sometimes the fog will let the sun through one pacified man went off with good grace and patrick laughed at the other's stern face you think me a blarney hark what i say i took the truth in an illigent way sure you know and i know and every one the fable of the philosopher's stone for stone elixir and the englishman's wit men have searched long and found it never a bit then lo to himself face that joke so clear that even a scotchman may see it next year end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Circuit by Jean Blewett, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. A pretty port I sailed from, so long, so long ago, as day down golden stairway, climb to the world below. Ho, mariner, come tell me, come tell me of a truth. Know you a track will lead me back unto the shores of youth. A pretty port I sailed from, so long, so long ago, the blue sky stretching over, blessed all the world below. I laughed good-bye so lightly, nor wrecked I then forsooth, that leagues of years and mist of tears would hide the shores of youth. Yet ever follows after a breath of fragrance rare, from hearts of flowers that blossom, but in its tender air and ever hear i sweet and clear the music of its birds the whistling flight of wings at night the songs too sweet for words and ever see its beauty the smiling of its shore and ever wait and ever long to anchor there once more ho mariner ho mariner come tell me of a truth know you a track will lead me back unto the shores of youth a pretty port i sailed from so long so long ago as day down golden stairway pass to the world below sail on sail on till light is done ho mariner so wise tis far behind so far behind this port i sailed from lies sail on sail on you tell me and in the twilight's glow i'll reach the port i sailed from so long so long ago if this be so then we may know that all who lose will find each ship will come to love and home and all it left behind youth's golden shore lies on before so gaily sail we on for the port we reach at even is the port we leave at dawn the harbor bar shines golden o oh, sweetness of the truth will cross it o'er and come once more unto the shores of youth end of poem this recording is in the public domain gethsemane by jean blewett read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c 
O oh, bless Christ, O oh, bless Christ! The night is deep and long, And there is none to watch with me Of all the careless throng. O oh, bless Christ, O oh, bless Christ! The world lies fast asleep. Think thou on dark Gethes mean, And count the tears I weep. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. My Friend by Jean Blewett Read for LibriVox.org By Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. I have a friend, if you should ask, Why tis I love her well, Indeed twould be a weighty task, These reasons all to tell. First, she is good enough to see, A pretty face and kind, that somehow fairer is to me than others I can find. She has two lips with laughter filled, that hold not scorn nor sneer. She is a little bit self-willed, gangs her ain't gait, I fear. She has two strong and supple hands, two bright and tender eyes. She has a heart that understands, she has a judgment wise. Her voice at least to me, is fine. I like to lie and rest, and hear her reading, line by line, the poems I love best. No jealousy, no trace of spite, is in her nature strong. She is so loyal to the right, so gentle with the wrong. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Prodigal by Jean Blewett, read for LibriVox.org, by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. They sat alone by the fireside, a couple old and grey, brooding over a sorrow keen at the close of a winter's day. The woman spake to the man at length, tenderly, wistfully. The pillar of fire still guides by night the cloud still guides by day. If you would but take the ills of life, the losses, the sorrow vain, to the one whose ear is open to hear each cry of pain. You are thinking now of Willie, the boy we love so well, and who left his home to wander, whither, ah, who can tell? His room stands just as he left it. I go upstairs each day, and smooth the pillows with my hands, and for my darling pray. He may not have, sometimes my heart grows fairly sick with dread, in cold or storm or in sickness, a place to lay his head. My heart would break, my heart would break, did I not know the father of us all, stoops down to make my sorrow less, counts all the tears that fall. You will not turn where comfort lies, towards him you will not move. O oh, husband, give the Lord your heart, prove, prove his faithful love. If I had sought the Lord, said he, when youth and strength were mine, I might have had to cheer me now as dear a faith as thine. But God is just, his law is so stern, I've broken year by year. God is a judge. I feel that now, just holy and severe. I scorn to seek him after all the years I've walked in sin. Tis too near to life's ending now for me to just begin. My heart lies heavy in my breast, but I must bear my load. My pride has kept me all along a sad and dreary road. Yes, I am thinking, wife, of Willie, the boy who went away. Thoughts of him fill the heart of me when comes this time of day. I watch you praying for his soul, a light in your dear e. Methinks a soul from heaven itself might well come back to see. But I, I cannot pray at all, the words they will not come. My soul rebels and will not bow, my boy is far from home. 
my lad i was so proud of though often i was stern wilful was he but ah to-night for his presence i yearn there's a step on the walk outside trembling hands at the door and some one is kneeling by them sobbing out or and or father your prodigal has come unworthy of your name broken in spirit buffeted baptized with bitter shame but say forgiven and lay your hand on me the old way pride kept me long from you but i had to come home to-day such a welcome he got from them the old love changeth not faithful to death unserving miracles hath it wrought the father turned a glowing face and whispered let us pray my pride has kept me long from god but i'll go home to-day and then with firelight shining leaving his heavy load a prodigal old and hoary came trembling back to god he knew the truth deep as the sea high as the heaven above knew that the fatherhood of god was made and crowned with love end of poem this recording is in the public domain at quebec by jean blewett read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c quebec the gray old city on the hill lies with a golden glory on her head dreaming throughout this hour so fair so still of other days and all her mighty dead the white doves perch upon the cannons grim the flowers bloom where once did run a tide of crimson when the moon rose pale and dim above the battlefield so grim and wide methinks within her wakes a mighty glow of pride of tenderness her stirring past the strife the valor of the long ago feels at her heart-strings strong and tall and vast she lies touched with the sunset's golden grace a wondrous softness on her gray old face end of poem this recording is in the public domain the tea kettle's tune by jean blewett read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c i like to hear the kettle sing at this time of the day such cheery thoughts it seems to bring all worries flee away now spread your tablecloth so white it tells me as i wait come bustle round it's almost night the good man's at the gate long time ago it heard john say some foolish lover things and do you know that to this day they're in the song it sings it caught the gladness in my tone when baby grace arrived my pride when jim first stood alone my joy when robbie thrived all this was such a while ago you'd think it would forget but ah the tune i love it so it sings me sometimes yet when i was vexed with john last night and sat here full of pride it sang away with all its might and shamed me till i cried tis humming now come broil the ham or supper will be late put on the biscuits and the jam your goodman's at the gate end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Creed of Love by Jean Blewett, read for LibriVox.org by Iswa, in Belgium, in August 2017. I have a creed. I'll tell it you, since you have asked me to define on what I build my hopes of heaven. My creed? Yes, I can call it mine. 
since it belongs to every soul that reaches upward toward the light and trusts in christ for guidance sure and strength and will to do the right you'll find it written down my friend in that old book upon the shelf tis love the lord with all thine heart and love thy neighbor as thyself not quite enough twas counted so by one who walked by galilee his creed of love to god and man is quite enough for you and me end of poem this recording is in the public domain in the clover field by jean blewett read for LibriVox.org, by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c the air is sweet as sweet can be the azure sky spreads smoothly over and rest and joy keep company in this wide field of sun-kissed clover among the heavy heads of pink the avaricious bees are straying a glad full-throated bobolink his highest note is now essaying the earth is holding on her breast the sweetest flowers of all her growing the white clouds float from out the west a soft delicious wind is blowing o oh, life is good on such a day the blue sky bending smoothly over for neither care nor cross will stay in this white field of sun-kissed clover end of poem this recording is in the public domain Lullaby by Jean Blewett, sung for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in August 2017. Going off to sleep on Mama's breast, hush a -bye, baby boy. He's the baby mama loves best hush -a -bye, baby boy rosy cheeks have been kissed by the sun hush -a -bye, baby boy he's so tired chasing after fun hush -a -bye, baby boy pretty white night isn't he sweet hush -a -bye, baby boy reaching right from his chin to his feet hush -a -bye, baby staring up at the sky hush -a -bye, baby boy the stars will wink at you by and by hush -a -bye, baby Fast asleep on his mama's breast, hush -a -bye, baby boy. Put him down in his little white nest, 
Hushabye, baby boy. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Sunset Talk by Jean Blewett, read for LibriVox.org by Alexandra Selenius. How sweet the pink flush there in the west, with golden bars, let us sit a space. I want to talk to you as we rest, sit where my eyes can dwell on your face. I have been thinking of you today, you smile as you listen, is there an hour I'm not in her thoughts? I hear you say, look at that butterfly hid in a flower. Yes, I have been thinking all day long, for the fancy came, and it will not go, that if I were to die, I am strong. This is only a fancy of mine, you know, only a fancy. You take my breath away with your passionate kisses. People die, and happiness is no bar to death, or we need never fear him you nor i only a fancy so don't look so grave we'll be together for years to come but listen would you be good and brave if death god's reaper came into our home would you remember the full glad years and remembering them forget to weep we have been happy no need for tears if one of us dear one should fall asleep living without me would break your heart o oh, sorrow of joys remembered you cry keep all the brightness though far apart explain my meaning well dear i will try one summer morning i heard a lark singing to heaven a sweet-throated bird one winter night i was glad in the dark because of the glorious song i had heard the joy of my life i've heard you say with her love and laughter her smiles and tears let this be the lark's song sweet and gay that will sound in your heart through all the years for tell me dear one what is love worth if it cannot crowd in the time this given to two like us on this grey old earth such bliss as will last till we reach heaven so if I should die, just bend your head and kiss my lips as I lay at rest. Whisper, I love you living or dead, always and ever I love you best. Why talk of it now, a woman's whim? We are whimsical creatures, as you know. Look yonder, the twilight soft and dim comes hurrying over the world below. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Truth Upon Honor by Jean Blewett Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Pa's brother is a bachelor, but not a crusty one. He's got the very nicest home and lives there all alone. At Christmas time he buys me up most everything I want, because I look, so people say, just like my pretty aunt. She's just as nice as she can be, and long, long time ago, Pa's brother was, or tried to be, this same Aunt Jessie's beau. For once I heard Pa say to Ma, your sister was to blame. Then Ma, she flared right up and said, she did write just the same. Your brother, stubborn fellow, he would break a woman's heart. I tell you I was glad, for one they thought it best to part. I thought of this the other day, when our relations came, to eat the Christmas turkey and more things than I could name. For Aunt's face got as red as fire when Uncle Ned came in. Peace and goodwill at Christmas time, said Pa, with such a grin. I wish, said I to Brother Tom, they'd have a wedding day. What is the good of two nice folks sulking around this way? 
I'd be a bridesmaid for them, Tom, and wouldn't that be fun? And then we'd go there for holidays as soon as school was done. Don't you believe such stuff of him, said Brother Tom to me. Why, everyone that falls in love is silly as can be. Put all their good clothes on at once, strut round and show off so. The folks that have to live with them get sick of it, you know. Show, don't tell up such stuff as that about our Uncle Ned. If you don't mind your P's and Q's, I'll tell him what you said. But I found out that I was right. I'll tell you how it came. Truth upon honor we did play. It's just a lovely game. You ask the queerest questions, and they answer out quite free. And if they tell what isn't true, it's wicked, don't you see? Tom asked me, was I awful mad? He can be dreadful mean, when a great deal prettier hat than mine went by on Mabel Green. I had to tell, but never mind, I paid him back again. I made him own he copied sums from clever cousin Ben. And just she laughed, and Uncle Ned said twas a jolly game. He changed his tune, though pretty quick, when round his own turn came. Now tell the truth, I said to him, not maybe or I guess. Ain't you just heaps and heaps in love with our dear Auntie Jess? At first he scowled at Tom and me as mad as any hoe. And Tom he laughed and said, own up, you used to be her beau. At this he looked and looked at her and thought her nice, I guess. For right out quick he said, it's true, I love your dear Aunt Jess. We clapped our hands, now tis your turn to question Auntie here. But if he didn't, mean old thing, just whisper in her ear. Said she, this is a pretty game, which everyone should know. I wish we played it, dear, he said, a long, long time ago. Then I winked hard at Brother Tom and he winked back at me, and we snaked off and left them there as jolly as could be. I know a thing that I won't tell, not to Tom any way. I'll be a bridesmaid all so fine before next Christmas Day. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Elspeth's Daughter-in-Law by Jean Blewett Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. I don't know what spell came over us, that's over father and me, but two silly things we must have been, to let the boy have his way. But Sammy was all the boy we had, and he grew so big and tall. We had no girl, I didn't mind that, for I don't care for girls at all. And that great fellow, six feet I know, and an arm I couldn't span, was handsome, I may as well own up, that I like a handsome man. Now father declares the trouble came, to fill our life to the brim, by reason of Sam's good looks, he thinks, the boy should look just like him. Now that I'd hurt his pride for the world, but I'd feel most awful bad to see father's features one by one, a showing up on our lad. Sam got to college all right enough. When he came home, I declare, he told me about wonderful things he'd had to learn while up there. He showed me gloves all padded out, the cap and the scanty trues, and the mask of wire that hid his face, the day that they beat the blues. I had my doubts about Sammy, too, for fear twould spoil the lad. A widow Dobbs kept throwing out hints that he was going to the bad. She's awful quick with her nods and winks, and a body can't forget. Why? 
she made me do a thing one day that i'm mortal shamed of yet she'd been telling up a big long yarn of boy's deceit and of things that mothers discover unawares and get just desperate stings it vexed me so much that up i went and opened our sammy's trunk though if he had come and caught me there well i know i should have sunk i searched through all that big pile of stuff and i tried each little key but there was nothing in that big trunk that his mother daren't see then i went over to widow dobbs and we had a little spat my boy was hiding nothing from me thank god for a boy like that but i must tell you about his wife you see we had always planned that he'd marry eliza jane jones she owns a good bit of land she isn't good-looking i'll own up but in all your mortal life you never saw a better nor thriftier farmer's wife twas a shock i'll tell you when he wrote father said i was to blame that he'd bring a bride from the city daisy he said was her name well i'll never forget how i felt when i first saw sammy's wife i shook hands i couldn't have kissed her had it been to save my life you see i'd thought of the work plenty to do i can tell and i thought when sammy's wife came home that i'd try a shirking spell and when i saw her my heart was full of vexation and surprise i thought of hearty eliza jane jones till the tears came in my eyes she looked like a picture standing there a smoothing her soft hair down it made me feel hateful just to know i was homely old and brown it vexed me just to look at her hands so dimpled and soft and white i took mr sammy to my room and told him it wasn't right she is no worker i said to him and drones are bad in a hive he laughed oh we are a sleepy lot daisy will keep us alive i know how twill be i said to him she'll want new things every day in machinery to do up the work in the quick new-fangled way but i won't have it i said to him i have my way of going and it's girls that can't do anything that want to do the showing he took it good thinks i to myself i'll finish while i'm in it there's one thing sammy i've never done and i'm old now to begin it i'm old to wait on your lady wife and stick to it day by day and listen to high faluting talk and feel i'm just in the way and another thing i said to him then stopped and got red and hot you needn't think your babies all mine because i'll tell you i'll not i wish you could have heard the boy laugh he shook the things on the shelf the dear little sammy shan't be bust he said i'll mind em myself all this talk i'll tell just to show what a fickle thing i am and how little my words really meant when i said all this to sam it was only some four years ago and stowed in the big back hall there's machines for almost everything leaning their backs to the wall my daughter-in-law tends to it all a good stout girl at her hand if i say it myself you can't find better kept house in the land the books and papers and flowers seem part of her everyday life and no doctor can tend to a sprain better than our sammy's wife now i like to sit here in my chair and watch her happy and free and i like yes i'll own up i like 
baby to climb on my knee poor old father is sillier yet a slave to the three-old jim my he grins and looks proud as can be because the boy looks like him oh we all have our worries i know we find each blemish and flaw but there's one perfect thing in this world sam's wife my daughter-in-law end of poem this recording is in the public domain cold water by jean blewett read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c my niece from boston minerva bleak so learn they call her madame with all her ologies french and greek with all the queer things she styles antique came to see me and adam my brother he wrote before she came a patient i send to you just chase the cobwebs out of her brain and make her happy and sweet again just now she's horribly blue blue i cried tis a serious thing system all out of kilter but adam laughed when he saw me bring herbs i had gathered late in the spring to brew into a filter i tell you it was a big surprise when i got a look at her blue there was nothing blue but her eyes they were as blue as the summer skies adam laughed but no matter she hadn't been there many weeks when i began to worry a girl should have roses in her cheeks should sing and laugh sometimes when she speaks and not be sad and sorry i knew what was wrong and told her so studyin and contrivin over things she had no call to know and quite neglectin the life and glow that kept the soul a thrivin she had books on science and books on art and books on things still higher wonderful things that gave you a start but not a line or a word on the heart full of its vain desire well she'd been there a month maybe more twas drearful stormy weather she'd just been telling me o'er and o'er quaint little stories she told before as we sat there together when martha came showin in young blaine most as tall as our ceiling such a splendid fellow good and plain with no great beauty to make him vain but lots of sense on feelin i introduced him all right i know i like him so does adam but Nimer but minerva's face went white as snow and he said bowing his head just so we've met have we not madam a nice romance right under my nose i watched it growin growin along through the weeks of frosts and snows oh i wasn't blind you may suppose and bitter north wind blowin for a man from boston came along such an elegant fellow played the guitar wore his hair quite long talked to minerva of art and song in tones so soft and mellow before long i had my feelings stirred and vowed he shouldn't have her i listened long but i never heard from his mouth one good sensible word nothing but rank palver and to watch that girl who seemed so wise listening to all he told her it made the tears come into my eyes and my strong temper get on the rise but when the man got bolder and they talked together and agreed god's word was but a fable a good real written story indeed why i got right up as i had need stand this i wasn't able i told him he had better take his views where they were needed minerva said twas a great mistake 
said sometimes her heart did fairly ache to know as much as he did then i got minerva off alone ah she was dear the sinner said i if old satan gets this one it won't be because i haven't done all that i could to win her so i told her things tender and true told her of love undying told her of peace that my own soul knew till pride died out of her eyes of blue and she fell softly crying you were a babe when your mother died and i stood there beside you can you believe that your mother lied when she kissed your face i said and cried the christ will keep and guide you will bring my little one home to me and gates of pearl were lifting your mother was very dear to me now on what big mysterious sea would you have her soul drifting next day there came through the bitter cold two offers or what i suppose was one in an envelope square and bold the other all perfume white and gold tied up in hothouse roses they all went skating that afternoon down on the frozen river when i think how they came back so soon minerva half drowned and in a swoon it always makes me shiver twas all for the best that bath so cold proved a boon and a blessin down went blaine after her strong and bold while safe to shore the other one rolled oh twas a wholesome lesson we sat there a happy crowd that night the winter winds were blowin minerva a little weak and white her left hand hid in the preacher's right her eyes all soft and glowin would you believe it the other came full of presumes and supposes hope nobody held he was to blame i carried him down though just the same his bunch of hot house roses he bowed himself off with such an air not a bit overpowered and adam said everything was fair and adam said anything was fair with a man who went around with such hair and proved himself a coward my brother wrote to me yesterday how did you cure my daughter she's not the same girl that went away but when i ask her she'll laugh and say the cure oh just cold water end of poem this recording is in the public domain long time ago by jean blewett read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c there's been a fair in our nearest town a wonderful show of new things and ebenezer and i went down just to see the folks and view things i wore the bonnet i got last week this stylish city-made bonnet and was sorry i did after all for the dust settled so upon it i wouldn't have ebenezer know or parson for all creation but i don't feel right unless i'm dressed in the very latest fashion their sister thompson a good old maid it's many a hint she's given i'd feel more at home in vanity fair than i would in the courts of heaven she vexes me with her saintly ways i never need to try please her and i can guess at the reason too she wanted my ebenezer she's delicate she said to him once when he was at first my lover no sort for a farmer lad to choose sakes alive there's nothing of her she won't stand life's toil and turmoil long she says of late so regretful 
well she may get ebenezer yet for all men are so forgetful but never mind i went to the fair i wish my dear you had been there for i know you would never forget such pretty sights as were seen there now since i saw the marvel myself i know you'll surely believe it their foolin round with the lightning grim have made a plan to deceive it just think of taking some bits of steel and a rod that's far from pliant to put on the roof of a house or barn that it can glare round defiant ebenezer fancied it i know and wanted to make the bargain but kind of dreaded what i would say and also good elder largan twould be right pleasant he said to me when the storm was at its labors to have something standing up like that to scare it off of the neighbors ebenezer i said very sharp for i didn't like his spirit god holds all the lightning in his hand then why should his children fear it you just let that precious thing alone let it alone ebenezer and if we're stuck when the lightning comes why never mind ebenezer then there were machines for everything but i would feel like a ninny setting all day on a cushioned chair spinning rolls on that queer jinny they wanted to sell me one right off i shook my head not at present i'll do my work in the good old way though it isn't quite so pleasant i've done my share of the big farm's work spinning and weaving and baking though sometimes only the good lord knows how my back and legs are aching and whatever sister thompson says she can't make fun of my working and if i like fashion most too well tis in the fashion of shirking there's awful smart people in the world you think so if you had been there such signs and wonders on every hand at the fair was to be seen dear and i wore my very newest things maybe i shouldn't have done it but truth is truth and i'll own right up i look quite nice in this bonnet i wouldn't have ebenezer no or parson for all creation but i don't feel right unless i'm dressed in the very latest fashion end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Meanest Man by Jean Blewett Read for LibriVox.org By Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Tell you why I never got married? I'd as lief as not Sarah Ann. I'd never but once got an offer, And then, well, he wasn't the man. Tell the story, yes, if you wish it. You cannot remember, I know when the widow wemp and her youngster moved in the old cottage below that spring was as backward as could be the nights and the days were so cold not a bird had a bit of a song but the robins saucy and bold did you ever try to be kind to a kitten that scarcely could stand half starved or half drowned or half frozen yet it flies from your outstretched hand. Well, twas just so with that little one, when I tried to get him one day, my heart kind of melted watching him, and his solemn, unchildish play. A brand new idea but struck me, as I washed the dishes that night. I sauntered down to the cottage, with a basket not very light. Oh, but that was a comfortless room the widow so thin and white was rocking the boy and a dimness came over my eyes at the sight i walked right up to her and kissed her 
says I, little woman I know, things haven't gone well with you lately, or you wouldn't look as you do. But says I, if a friend can help you, and ease up your trouble a mite, why, I'll just sit down here beside you, and we'll talk it over to-night. She took my two hands and she held them. The big tears ran down her pale cheek. Oh, I'm lonely, she cried, and foolish. Says I, you are worn out and weak. What has this to do with my offer? Be patient, dear Sarah Ann. If you'd listened a minute longer, you'd have caught a glimpse of the man. For right there, all creaking and groaning, beneath some rough limbs meant for wood, in front of the door of the cottage, old Abner Green's big wagon stood. And Abner came in without knocking, a nodding to her and to me. What two of us here, well, there's nothing like havin' good neighbors, said he. Now I've heard your amazing poor missus, and I reckon it must be true. Speak out to us fully and freely. It may be I can help you through. She told him I sat there and listened to a story of hopes and fears, of poverty, sorrow, and heartbreak, till I scarce could see for the tears. She talked of the home of her childhood, of parents and friends kind and true, of seasons o'erflowing with pleasure, of skies that were cloudless and blue, of the meadows so fragrant with clover, with bees in its down drooped head, of the noisy stream rushing onward, away to its pebble-lined bed, of the homely affection abounding, the work that was duty's sweet call, of the church that stood on the hillside, of the graves the end of it all. I'm waiting, her voice broke a little, for one perfect summer to come, not the stifling summers of cities, but one of the summers of home. And before the frost touches the flowers, here she held the boy to her breast, I'll be sleeping too soundly to care, and this dear one, ah, God knows best. Now I'm not soft-hearted as some folks, but an old catch came in my breath. She seemed such a lone little creature, with nothing to wait for but death. But Abner he rose up and buttoned his great coat and smiled so benign. Mrs., he said, I've brought you some wood. There's no kinder heart, him, that mine. Them limbs may be just a little tough, but no fire is tougher, I guess. Don't thank me, I know what you mean now, and feeling are hard to express. Perhaps I've a penny about me to give to that boy that's asleep. Don't let him be foolish at spendin', but teach him to hold and to keep. There's likely some things at the house to, I can either send up or bring. Don't thank me you're poor, but you're honest. You can work it out in the spring. I'm not so well grounded as some folks, and I took a tumble from Grace, to talk of her walking to pay him and death in her pretty young face. He followed me out as I started, my head pretty high down the lane. But just as I came to the thorn hedge, he caught up and said, He, now Jane, I've something special to tell you. You needn't go hurrying through. Say I'm thinking of marrying Jane, and the lucky woman is you. Yes, I might have found one much younger, if I had gone looking around. But you can keep house, little woman, with the best of them I'll be bound. Look shan't count when I hunt a woman, say I to myself long ago, that she's savin' and strong and hearty, 
is all that I hanker to know. I'll tell you what, Jane, such a bargain. Won't travel your road every day. I fix my affections right on you. When shall it be? What do you say? We're both of us steady and honest. We've both got a fair share of pelf. I've looked quite a while for a woman who thinks just about like myself. I gasped, Sarah Ann, for a minute, was never so shamed in my life. And old Abner Green stood there leering, quite certain that I'd be his wife. Do I look so anxious to marry? said I, with lips scornfully curled that you really think I'd go partners with the meanest man in the world. So you've waited to find you a wife with a mind like your own, you say, but you'll not find one so mean as that if you wait till the judgment day. Then I turned me about and left him, staring up at the silent stars. But I fancied I caught some swear words as I hurried over the bars. Sarah Ann, that's all the offer this Aunt Jane of yours ever had. Tis as well I'm content to live here with my own little bright-eyed lad. Yes, his mother died in the springtime. Here he comes with his hair all curled and face like a peach now isn't he the loveliest thing in the world end of poem this recording is in the public domain end of heart songs by jean blewett